say the book of Acts, the story of Peter and Paul, how they worked so hard to just spread the gospel, how they worked so hard just to get out there and, and get, get what was needed to be done, done already, and how nobody would let them live at peace how they were constantly being persecuted, how they were constantly being watched over. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to take you to the book of Matthew, verse, uh, chapter 28, verse 19. The word says, I'm actually going to start on verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always till the very end of age. We're reading about... Jesus is crucified. Jesus is taken to the tomb. Jesus is left as dead. Jesus rises from the dead and proves the whole world wrong. And after Jesus rises from the dead, he presents himself to the disciples. This is the first time he presents himself to the disciples. And this is the first instruction that he gives his disciples. Go out there. Go out to every nation and make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And if we continue on to the book of John, uh, chapter 20, 21, verse 15. Sorry, my, my tongue is getting a little dry and my, my words are slurring. How many of you knew that Jesus walked around the earth for 40 days after having rose from the dead? If you didn't know, you really should study the Bible. It's very interesting. It's very shocking. Chapter 21, verse 15 says, When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he had said to them, he had said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you, where you do not want to go. How many of you love the Lord? Amen. How many of you truly? I'm, I'm going to ask you one more time. And before I ask you, I want you to take a moment to think. Because today I'm going to challenge you. Jesus is telling Simon, do you love me? And as soon as he answers, then Jesus gives him a job to do. This is how we are going to prove our love to Jesus Christ. How many of you love the Lord today? Amen. How many of you will continue loving the Lord every day of your life? Amen. Then are you ready for what's coming to you? Amen. Are you ready to take steps? Are you ready to begin walking? Are you, be, are you ready to reach out and make disciples of all nations? Are you ready to dress the sheep of God? Are you ready to feed the sheep of God? Amen. Are you ready to gather the sheep of God and give them a home? Oh, yes. Amen. Because if you are, then get ready. Because this is where it all begins. Amen. This is where it all begins. Jesus gave Peter instructions and Peter did not waste time. The book of John ends on chapter 28. The book of Acts begins in chapter 1. And Peter, the first thing that he does is go. he goes out. His disciples begin to spread. They 
they truly love Jesus Christ, they start to do their job. They start to walk out. They start to proclaim the great news. They start to proclaim the salvation. They start to proclaim that Jesus Christ was real, that he died for sins, that he died to rescue the lost. But all this time, they were being watched. Because although he was bringing words to those who wanted to hear, he was also bringing words to those who didn't want to share their glory as ministers, who those that didn't want to share their territory. So that's, this is where the persecution of the Church of Christ, of those who love the Lord, of those who love, uh, serve the Lord, begins. And 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 12, Peter writes, Dear friends, don't be surprised by the people suffering you are going through. Don't feel as if it were something, something strange were happening to you. Don't be surprised. It's not something strange. This is normal. This is life. This is how it is written. This is how it's supposed to happen. Life isn't going to be all beautiful and dandy when you start serving the Lord. When a person decides to come into the Lord, when, this, when a person decides to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're not Lord and Savior. Listen closely. Lord and Savior. Lord because he governs them. Once you say, Jesus, you are my Lord, you are saying, I am your servant. I am going to serve you. I am going to follow you. I am going to do as you tell me to do. Because you are my Lord, I submit to you. And after submitting comes salvation. Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior doesn't just mean you're saved once you accept Christ. That's what Savior is. If you want a Savior, go ahead and give your heart to Christ. But if you are proclaiming that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior, then you are making a proclamation that you are, are committing to live a life of serving Christ. Amen. As doing as he commands you to do. You are willing to learn, you are willing to receive, and you are willing to go, and as God has given you, you will give back. Not in these four walls, because all of us here are supposed to be saved. All of us here know who Christ is. So what are we doing with what God has given us in these four walls? The church of Christ needs to learn that what Christ has given you and the instructions, instructions, instructions that he has given you, you must walk out. To all nations. Christ didn't say go to, um, let me see, go to this church and go to that church and go to Pastor Dad and Pastor so and so and, and preach and give the word. No, go out. Go out to the nations. That is our command. We proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord. Therefore, he gives us an instruction and we start walking. There is no time to waste. There is no time to think it over. Time is ticking. It's going by fast. What are we waiting for? Like I said, this is where it all begins. This is where Peter gets out working. There's no time to think and stop what ifs. He began to spread the good news of the gospel in every place and in every person. They also had to put up with those who were not willing to share, like I said, the glo their glory as big top ministers. Or not only ministers, those who had their territories out there. Those who believe that they are the ones who own the block or they're the ones who own this, that, this place or that place. They don't want to hear it. They don't want their people to hear it. And if they don't want to hear it, it's fine, but they don't know who is in there that needs to hear it. Who is in there that, that wants to be saved. Who is in there that is seeking something different. In verse 13 of First uh, Peter 4, the word says that Christ suffered for us and endured through it when he was taken and persecuted for our sins. That way we may follow his example and endure through our suffering. We should be pleased about participating in the suffering of Christ. You should be happy to know that you are suffering because of Christ. Because if you are suffering because of Christ, it's because you're doing something right. Amen. 